The UCLA Debate Union is very proud to present the proposition that this House would condition state funding to universities upon all academic work being made available to the general public. You want to call this House to order? All right. The idea of bringing more education to the whole of society is something that is very pressing in today's society. For example, just recently, President Obama brought up in the State of the Union address how he wants to expand free education to two years of college. Those sorts of things show how pressing of an issue it is whether or not we can increase the education values of the whole of society, something that is on the minds of Americans right now and should definitely be in the minds of you right now, especially within this House. So when it comes to the motion, this House would condition state funding to the universities upon all academic work being made available publicly, we proudly propose that this ought to be the case. Everyone has a right to education, and that is something that we strongly stand beside, beside on team government. Basically, what this motion is asking us is whether or not we should make something that is already happening, state funding to public universities, mandatory if and only if they have all their academic work placed on somewhere like the internet. So here are a few definitions that we have on team government. First, we think that it should only be based off of public universities rather than including private universities because it asks whether or not we should have public funding given to those universities, which is already being done, but only on the pub public universities, not private. And then in terms of academic work, we're only going to look from work given by the professors, not by the students, for two reasons. First, the university cannot interfere on in what students ought to do. It's not something that they have a right to do, but more so, they can put it into the contracts of their professors, and it's probably more objectively true if the professors publish their work rather than the students, because the students are still learning and possibly have a few mistakes that they have there. And then Finally, we'd like to see uh, that going, pu going public and giving it, making it available to the public would mean simply putting the information online or available in places like libraries. So I'm going to bring up two main arguments in this speech today. The first, that we have a right to education, and the second, that there are many benefits from education. And my partner is going to bring up our last point within the next speech. So first, let's talk about the right to education. Everyone has a right to education. This is something that has constantly been shown through the past uh, couple of decades through multiple different philosophies. So for example, like I've already stated, it's something pressing in the minds of the United States citizens right now, as it was something that was brought up in the State of the Union address. But also remember that in the past, people like Marx and Engels advocated for free education to lots of people. Now remember, we're not actually saying that we ought to be a communist nation, because we're not saying that free education ought to go so far as everyone has free access to universities and getting a degree, but rather what we're saying is that individuals ought to have access to this education because they have a right to be able to be educated by themselves. Furthermore, education is necessary in today's age to interact with others, do things such as get a job, and be knowledgeable about the world. So basically, having a right to education makes sure that you have access to other human rights, such as being able to socialize with others and be able to interact with others, which is necessary today uh, in terms of having some basis level of education. Otherwise, individuals simply disregard you because you're not as high of an educational level as you are, which is seen in the past where philosophers tried to get rid of other er other people in society simply because they are not at their educational level. We should not have that. We should allow individuals, if they want to, be able to access that education. The impact of this is that this is an obligation on the side of the state to give access to education. The state has an obligation to protect their individuals, and if education is the key to other rights and education is the right itself, then the state ought to protect it. This outweighs other impacts because this is on a more moral level and an obligation of the state rather than an implementation level. So we ought to be able to see that this does interact with other arguments as well. Our second argument is the benefits of education. This leads to a large amount of benefits when we actually allow individuals to get educated on their own and get more involved in society. So we see this through a few ways. I'm going to take this from the perspective of stakeholders. But before that, what we have to see is that opposition has yet to even come up here and ask a question or see any point of information against it. Obviously, maybe it's a great idea to have some public education here. So I'm going to take it from the stakeholders, from benefiting individuals and benefiting society. 
from the individual perspective. This allows individuals to understand how they ought to do things such as protect themselves, protect their family, increase the well-being that they have on a day-to-day -day society. So if they take an economics class, they know how to better invest their money in the future. Or if they take a self-defense class and they see it on the internet, then they know how to protect themselves from other people in society. Those sorts of things benefit the individual in order to make sure that they can have a better life. What this also means is that it gives them a base level of education so that they can get the skills that they need to interact and be able to get jobs in the future, which leads us to our second stakeholder, society. It benefits society because the more educated the individuals are, that means that the better chance that they can actually get those jobs and interact and put more money into the economy, thus raising overall living styles of everyone. The impact of this is that it benefits many as well as individuals qualitatively and quantitatively. We see an impact on the individual level with increasing the amount of well-being that we have to individuals and on a global level, or at least within the state, because it increases overall that well-being and brings it up. So that's why it outweighs in terms of quality as well as quantity. So everyone has a right to education. That's what we ought to do. We ought to be able to make that education available to those who want it. Chair, thanks Prime Minister for his speech. And now invite the Leader of Opposition to give a five-minute speech in rebuttal and to build the case for the major side of the aisle. Now, the government has made one crucial mistake. Now, they have equated education with the access to academic work. Now, see, the problem is, this simply isn't the same. Now, we want to start off by saying that we agree with all their contentions. Education is great, and education has very significant benefits. But getting an education and having access to all the academic work, even if you're uneducated, is simply not a good thing to have. Now, we, move, we start off by first of all refuting definitions. Now, first of all, they say we should limit it to public universities because they get state funding. However, this simply is true. A lot, if not most, of research is actually done by private universities, and that the majority of the universities, at least in the United States and in most countries, are private, and that they also do get state funding depending on the research. So we would like to extend this to private universities as well. And then we move on to refuting their cases. So now the first contention was that the right to education. We want to point out a contradiction here. Now, the contradiction was they said that, well, no, 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 we don't think everyone should go to a two-year university. We just think everyone should get educated. But now they also said that in Obama's State of the Union, they said everyone deserves to go to the university, and that should be free. And they also say that we should educate everyone. So they see an inherent contradiction in their speech that, well, should we educate these people or not? And what we think is we think that, yes, you should be educated. And if you are educated, if you can contribute valuably to academic work, then you deserve access to this academic knowledge. And that's what leads us to our contention. But before this, I'll answer your question. Yeah, so you say that you want to extend it to private universities. Is that sort of implying that you're on our side of this? Uh, in no way is that implying that. Now I'll move back onto my case. So we have three contentions. Our first contention is that public opinion does not equal good science. Our second opinion equals that monetary incentives are um, Monetary incentives lead to better science. And our third contention is that we are establishing a slippery slope. Now, the first contention is that public opinion doesn't equal good science. Now, what we see is that the reason that a lot of our science is so good and so valuable is because it's a group of scientific peers who are getting together and critiquing each other. People who are experts in the field critique one another. Now, it leads to good work being done because only people who are really in this field who know what they're doing are going to be paying for these articles and reading it. And what this does, and this increases, we have things like an age index between papers, where it's the numbers of papers published and how many times each paper has been published. We already have this published or perish mentality inside of these schools with these professors. And what we are is that we already have such a cutthroat environment that by having the public uh, also be contributing to this, what you're doing is we're making these professors more than ever influence on what people think of their work. Now, the reason this is bad is because what we're doing is people no longer base what they're going to do their science on based on what's best for academia, what's best for science. They're going to base it on what's public opinion. And for this, we cite the stem cell work that has been done in the past five years. Now, what we see is that there was a paper that published in Nature Medicine. And what it shows is that by taking normal cells and putting it in certain environments, you can convert it back to pluripotent stem cells. This was huge. Published by every news article, changed completely, and it thought to change science because the public loved it. They wanted to hear this. Until other scientists tried to re-replicate the results. And they found that this simply wasn't true. Because something that was loved by the public was not good science. And this is the problem. If we do things that appease the public, we don't always do things that are good for science. And that's essential. Because an uneducated public does not contribute to science, and we therefore do not need to give them access to work. Yes? Wouldn't you uh, say, opposition, that uh, actually, 
what science is, is trying to falsify public opinion. That is the whole premise of science. No, and science is trying to find the truth. That's all I hear about. What science is trying to do is to find the basic truths that underlie the society. Whether or not the disagrees of public opinion is not for science. We move on to our second contention since our time is running short. And we see the monetary incentive for the researchers. And we see that by withholding these results from everyone, we make people pay for certain results. We make people pay for the patented work. And what this does is this adds an incentive. Worker, uh, professors no longer simply work for their job, but they work for this extra monetary incentive. And what this does is this actually helps science because it gives an extra motive to progress. And we see this with at UCLA where we have many patented works. One I'm thinking of specifically is with Dr. Horowitz inside of UCLA Medical Center, where he has patents on the recombinant Bacille common garret, which is the B, uh, TB vaccine. And every time someone uses one, he gets money. Now what this does is everyone now is trying to do that. So he makes a significant amount of money, and he was highly motivated to do that. So we see this high motivation. And the third contention, which we must get to, is the slippery slope. Now if we let government to start decide how academic work is basically valued, and where you're going to get your money, we basically say, when can the government decide what and what is not good academic work? We may see that if a government has an environmental policy that directly goes against what environmental research may be saying at a university, they may say, you know, we're going to cut your funding because we have the right to decide funding based on research, based on this academic work. And this just leads us to a slippery slope where we lead the government deciding what science is saying rather than science deciding what science is saying. What we were saying is we want the most beneficial work. We want to provide the scientific community with the most valuable work possible. By opening the uneducated public, the public opinion to this work, we are, just, uh, we are directly hurting this, and we feel that you must vote the government side, opposition side. Deputy Prime Minister to give a five-minute speech during the public case and extend the remarks of the department to your ear. Pull the table back just a couple of inches. Thank you. Good. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, we feel inside um, government that when you know, moving into my rebuttals, that when the um, opening opposition comes up here and tries to equate education with, you know, um, academic work, including, you know, ev like, you know, every sort of research that, you know, a person does, everything that um, is essentially conducted by a person, we feel that that's essentially wrong. Because what we came up here and defined academic work as was primarily like you're looking at lectures that they teach, you know, or other stuff that they do um, that benefits the students um, through these means, like, of education, right? So we feel that it's essentially wrong to try to equate education with academic work because we feel that. Um, we understand that this this work does in fact have um, other repercussions that we feel you know it's not really fair to, to necessarily publish all of this work that goes up. Now the second point is that he's come, the the opening opposition comes up here and says that you want it, that they want to extend it to private universities, which means that they're essentially agreeing with the fact that they feel that all academic work should be published and should be made avail available to the public because it has benefits to society. Now with the reason why we said that it should not be um, available to public to private universities is because that requires major sort of um, you know, funding that requires major sort of feasibility issues that we see as you know not necessarily um, feasible. We see that that we see that as a problem, which is why we feel that it should only be restricted to state universities. And when they come up here and say that they want to extend it to private universities, we, we essentially see this problem that they they admit that what we're doing is good and what th that they want us to further propagate what we're doing. Before I move on, so why is it not feasible when private universities still actually get state funding depending on their research? Well, I mean, private universities do not get the same level of state funding that, um, you know, current state universities do. And we feel that if we um, incentivize state universities to do this, which state universities which are already funding, the government does not necessarily have much to lose by um, allowing such a policy to go through. This brings me to my next rebuttal on what um, the, oh, the leader of opposition said, which is that science is good because they get to critique each other. The fact is that even if academic work gets put out, people can still critique it. It does not mean that there's no sort of platform for a person to critique it. Now, it, all it means is that Essentially, this goes against what he's saying because he says that science is about you know opinions coming out and clashing, and we feel that if you open it to the access of everyone, that means that more and more people can come and critique it, more and more ideas can sort of be expressed. And that's I'm going to talk about, about that more, more about this free flow of, of ideas in my argument. Now, the fact is that he talks about this monetary incentive and all and all that. And we say that professors get paid to do what they do, which is why we don't necessarily see this as a problem where you know they should have memberships um, in order to access scientific journals. And, you know, the fact is that if we appease the public, we don't necessarily do good for science. Um, moving on to my uh, 
to my next point. You know, we need to see, we see that there needs to be a distinction between scientific work and what they necessarily do in class. When we say that we want lectures being put up online, we're not saying, we're not equating that to this example of the TB vaccine. We're not saying that we want TB vaccines to be free to every single person and everything about TB vaccines should be available online. We're saying that we want these lectures that benefit society to go up online because people can then use them. Which brings me into my um, argument. I'm going to be doing a cost benefit analysis, two levels. Firstly, on the nature of academic work, and the second, um, on the effects on society. That brings me to my first level, which is on the nature of academic work. Now we see that a lot of what these, um, these professors do, and a lot of that isn't necessarily intellectual property. Specifically, we're talking about lectures here. And we feel that top quality lecturers can actually make um, very complex ideas come up in a simple sort of form, right? And we, we feel that when we bring this resource to those who are younger, to, to high school students, or you know, to other people who could use these sort of resources, we feel that it has positive benefits because of the fact that it leads to a more um, educated society. And those benefits have already been dealt with um, you know, uh, my partners already spoken about those benefits. And we see that because you're making the, these resources available to these people, you have overall positive effects, which is why um, we feel that this is essential. We feel that this has to, to take place. That brings me to my second argument, which is on the effect on society. Now we see that but when you have um, you know, something, when you have a platform where high school students can look, can watch college videos, or when other people can watch college videos, we see that they can watch what they're interested in, right? They, it helps them develop interests, help them look at a variety of fields, helps them decide what they want to do. This practical benefit is that individuals can decide what they want to study before they enter college in the first place. If, because, I mean, if you go to college and you try to take a hundred different classes, you're going to end up spending a lot of tuition, you're going to end up spending a lot of money just to decide what career you want to flow in. And we feel that if you make this, um, this information available to others, that it benefits them in that they can decide what they want to do before getting into college and then pursuing what they want um, you know, more. So that leads to a more informed sort of society. We see that people get incentivized to pursue education when they see that um, you know, stuff is being put up on the net. We also feel that um, putting up everything on the net um, in, in, sort of increases the sources of data that you have available. We see that there is a better free flow of ideas. I've talked about this before and we see that that essentially leads to progress because it's not just young people who can use it. We see that other academic scholars can use this sort of information um, and you know, critique it, can sort of have better flow of ideas in, in the way that was not you know, possible previously. I mean, we had problems where Darwin and you know, someone, uh, there was another person who had very similar ideas, could not actually have conversation with each other because of the fact that there was no real platform for both of their things to sort of be, um, be put together. And we see that with all this avail uh, information available online, we have better flow of ideas, which essentially leads to progress, which is why you need a both side government. Thank you. Stand behind that, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, before I move on to my argument proper, let me first rebut a few uh, issues brought up by side, uh, side government. The first thing they said is that uh, is they tried to limit it simply to lectures, and we disagree with this definition, A, because it didn't come out in the Prime Minister's speech, B, because um, as we understand it, they all, there are several resources which already do put uh, lectures and such online from several resources in forms like audiobooks, podcasts, and everything. Um, moreover, we're going to uh, also extend this to research because we feel that research will uh, it, it is the most substantial work that these universities do, and it's also the, um, the, the, the area of this issue that will um, lead to the most harm. Um, moreover, they tried to, um, the reason we wanted to extend it to private universities, um, they, and they took this as an indication that we agree with them, which is not true. The reason we extended this to private universities is that they share the characteristic of public universities in that they do research and they receive state funding. Um, moreover, uh, they tried to uh, make a distinction between scientific and working class, and they said that um, putting up these top quality lectures uh, will lead to a more educated general public. Um, we would like to also put another angle to this. What we're trying to say is that it's, it's disincentive to attend. If you equate the amount of education you get by simply watching these lectures on YouTube, then why would you attend college? Why would you go through this, um, this entire process which does cost more money if you know um, you can you are considered equally educated just by watching it for free on YouTube. 
Now, um, mm -hmm. moving, moving on to my argument proper, but before I do that, are there any questions in the house? No, thank you. Um, moving on to my argument proper. As my partner uh, pointed out, there are many social effects of um, making all the academic work public, which is that people will try to dictate what, it, uh, what the university produces. This is wrong for the big reason that it will end up polit politicizing the academic work. It will end up politicizing science. Um, and I'm also going to show you why this is bad and why this affects society. Um, but before I do any kinds of information, okay, kind of. Um, so uh, the the first point I'd like to make is that when people are able to see every um, all the research that is present in uh, that is being produced in these universities, they will want to try to um, they will want to try to choose things that they agree with. Uh, no, thank you. Um, Right. They will want to try to um, dictate the uh, research that comes out of this university because they feel they own it because they pay the taxes. Um, they, will want to, they will ask questions like, why study HIV in immigrant workers when you can try to cure cancer? They will try to um, attach value to these things that reflects their own beliefs and what they believe is valuable. And ladies and gentlemen, that is not a good thing because um, the people do, public opinion should not decide what is important to study. It is the academics who should decide what is important to study. Right. Oh, what you said was that when you give when you when you give free flow of ideas, it will only lead to politicizing of uh, of such ideas. But don't you think that when you pro give research on the internet, it will only uh, in a way accelerate the research process because people are able to give it more input? Uh, no, I do not. In fact, I believe the harms of this will actually uh, lead to uh, like it will actually be counterproductive to everything the university is trying to achieve. Um, now. Um, because they will try to change what is being studied, um, it will end up politicizing science. And um, this is bad because we see that even when state, the state tries to fund art or tries to fund um, uh, philosophy and other, other, uh, other uh, government um, aspects of the government that try to fund such uh, pursuits, they are often the subject of politics. They are often made, uh, they are often tried, uh, torn down and then they're. It, there's debate about whether it has value to society, which it shouldn't be in public opinion sphere to do. Um, moreover, uh, and why is this bad, ladies and gentlemen? Because, it, because the universities are not an extension of the government, which is essentially what side government is trying to make it. Um, the universities are about increasing the quality of the labor in the, uh, labor in the country, which is also why it's a good thing for the economy. Um, it, it, it tries to increase the quality of labor by giving education and by giving research which it believes is worthy of being studied. Government funded studies are different from this. Government funded studies create studies uh, with information that is meant to benefit the public. Thus it is within the public domain. The public have the right to see this because they believe that, because they are the ones who are funding this. Now they are also funding universities, but why don't they get to see everything that um, everything that these universities produce. As my partner pointed out, it has a lot of harms. Also, because the public does, the public is paying taxes to fund the university, not the studies themselves. The public does not, the, the reason this is bad is because the public should not have the right to, um, uh, the public does not agree with everything the university produces and it need not. Because um, the public, for example, you would not want to take money away from the army just because you disagree with the war. You do not have to agree with every aspect of what your taxes are paying for. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, what have I showed you? I have showed you um, why, instead of uh, creating like a better educated public, uh, this motion will instead lead to politicizing science, it will lead to counterproductive uh, research, and it will lead um, actually, it will actually work out to the detriment of society, and thus the harms far outweigh the benefits. Thank you, Debbie. We have a temporary speech, and that closes up the front half of our debate. So, moving to the back half, I now welcome the member of government to give his five minute speech to respond and extend the case and the comments of his thoughts. We're here. Can you pull that table back just an inch or two? Yeah. Thank you. Good. Let me first begin by making a few refutations of the claims that the opposition has made. First of all, they said that education is not equal 
access to academic work. Well, how can that possibly be true? Because education is exactly access to resources that improve your ability to do anything. And access to academic work is a big part of education. Their second argument was that it would lessen the monetary incentives provided to researchers. Well, first of all, let's consider how researchers, they're not even motivated by money. That's not their first motivation. That's not their first motivation. Their primary motivation is to better the world that we live in. They're going to keep doing that. And on the, t on the subject of monetary incentives, how about the incentive of giving them a job that they wouldn't have if we hadn't provided them the, the necessary, uh, necessary supply of money to keep their jobs. Now, third argument that they said was that no one would attend university if you would make this information public. Well, that's just absurd because if you were as easily discouraged as to read a couple of articles and decide I'm not going to university, then maybe your place isn't in university and the government's purpose is definitely not to make people go to university, it's everyone's own choice. And I'm going to finish my refutations by uh, refuting one of their final points, and it was really a really weak point because they were trying to say that public opinion it shouldn't be made available to everyone because it would misinform everyone. The public would have no idea what's going on, and some weird arguments like that, which they were trying to propose and that simply cannot be true because the whole point of the scientific method is to refute public opinion. Let's look at uh, for example when people thought that the sun was orbiting the earth that was public opinion until it was refuted by scientists using the scientific method. Now I'm going to move on to my four arguments which are first that there's a social contract Second, that it's a win-win situation. Third, that it would promote the free market pace of ideas. And finally, that fundamentally, whoever's giving the money should be the one handing out the conditions to that money. Now, let's start off with our argument, which was the first one, that this government is based on a social contract. And you give up some of your rights in order to thrive. And in order to create an environment in which one, need, one can thrive, uh, it is very important to provide academic work to uh, the general public so that they can use it to their advantage. And therefore, academic work should be made available to everyone and it would allow for people to thrive, which is why the government should be a winner and should impose this condition. Now, the second argument that I want to make is that it will be a win-win situation. Firstly, because the government would be providing a better environment for people to learn in, which would improve the whole public sphere, the whole, uh, the whole world, basically, that's involved. And I just uh, remind everyone that there's no such thing as a free lunch and if you're giving people money, uh, it can't be unconditional. It has to be conditional on some things. And the, the universities are getting money, and the public is getting uh, better education. So it's a win-win for everyone. Now, moving on to my third point, it will propagate the free marketplace of ideas, the free exchange of ideas, which is what uh, this country was uh, pretty much based on. And a better circulation of ideas would promote better learning and a better society and it would benefit absolutely everyone. Therefore, uh, this should be, uh, condi the money should be conditioned on this. And now my final point is that fundamentally this shouldn't even be a debate because if you're giving the money to someone, it's your own choice about what to make them do with that money. If they don't want the money because it's uh, tied to some condition that they they don't need to take the money, right? We're not making anyone take money. Uh, we're giving the money, therefore, we should make our own conditions for what to do with those money. If whoever's not happy, 
just don't take the money, it's as simple as that. This is why uh, this house believes that the addition of state funding to universities needs to be uh, upheld, and that's why we win. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for his speech, and now welcome the member of opposition to give a five-minute speech in rebuttal and to extend the side of the aisle's case. Here it is. You pull the table back a couple inches. Yeah. Thank you. Are we ready, everybody? Hello. I want to begin by first extending the argument of what my previous members have stated about the politicized issue of work. This is a very important argument because the distinction I want to make is versus the quality of information and when this kind of information becomes misinformation. All of the affirmatives or the government's arguments are that giving information to the public will allow them to get a better kind of education. But in a world where information is politicized, when the government can choose that the kind of information that goes through the public schools are counter to their interests and thus co-opted and make it quite the opposite, we have misinformation going through the rest of the public. It turns all of the education claims that the government is trying to propose. On to the oh, yes, sir. Who said that the government can select what information goes up to that, that, that. that was the issue of the politicized government because the state government chooses who f the funding, as the state government, the mandates the kind of funding that goes to universities, they can choose what kind of information comes out into the public. But anyways, on to the Shame. recommendations. First, they say that education access is best, it um, leads to increase the ability for individuals to do work. But once again, I want to extend the arguments we make about information versus misinformation. You're going to make that distinction as the biggest reason for why you're going to vote for the opposition. The second reason they say is that there is no incentive for individuals to make this kind of work, and sorry, not the incentives, but that these individuals do it for the betterment of the world. But the argument that I'm going to make is that not only do these researchers want to make the world better, but they also want to feed their families, they also want to make some money and get benefits from the kind of labor that they're doing. Which is why the argument that the, my previous, the previous speaker said does not fly in a world where the, in these individuals can not only leave the public sphere, but also go to private education or even to private corporations in order to do their work, it makes it so this information would not be publicly available because they're not going to reap the benefits of their work. The third argument that they're making is that there's no place in the um, that individuals who do not belong, who want to get this information, not come to university. Well, they don't have to. They, there's a freedom of choice for them to not do so. But the argument we're going to make is that public universities not only get state funding, that's part of what they do, the other portion of it is money they get from tuition. In a world where they present all this information to the public, there is no incentive for these individuals to go into public universities. This hurts the kind of money that they would need and are relying upon. Public universities need students. In a world without them, what happens to the kind of information? If students do not go to the university, give their tuition to these schools, and allow for professors to teach this information that they're saying is continued that information to the public will not be available to the public. Yes. All right, I'd like to point out that they've sort of come with a straw man argument that because they're not, because they're providing the research for free, they don't get paid. The reality is that they work for state universities that give them money to conduct their own research and to lecture. Okay. So I want to argue on that point once again that in the world where they have to still give out all their information for free and they don't get paid as much, they would rather leave to the private sector or go to public or private sector or go to private universities. So the, I'm going to go make this argument even further. I want to now refute the rest of the arguments that the opposition, the government has made. The first argument they make is about the issue of the social contract. But I want to say that there's no argument or even an impact to this about this claim, so you're not going to evaluate. The second one is about the win-win. But I want to get once again extend the fact that this is not a win-win. Um, this is not a win-win for the reasons about the politicized education. This is actually a lose-lose, not only for the universities themselves because they will not be able to get funding, but also the public because the kind of information they're getting access to is inherently flawed, <laughs> problematic, and politicized. The last argument I want to, they make is that we are trying to promote the free marketplace of ideas. And this is where I'm going to try and make my argument about how the free, you can see the fact that there is a free market of ideas. But here's what happens when you consider that there is a free market. There are other schools like private universities and other areas for people to do research. The argument that we're going to make is that in a world where they have to, sorry, let me rephrase that. The argument that the opposition, sorry, the government is making goes counterintuitive to the incentives, not only of professors, but also for the students themselves. It counter, it's counterintuitive to professors because they not only release this kind of research, but they help to further prioritize and monetize off of this research. When it's publicly available, these professors will not be able to compile this research into books. This is something that UCLA professors, you can see, we see like Jared Diamond, he'll release a lot of information, but later monetize off of it by releasing a great book like Guns, Germs, and Steel. In a world where he has to do this 
kind of work. He would rather go to a private university where he doesn't even have to release this kind of information. This also feeds into my second argument about students. Students will not want to go to a public university if this information is already publicly available. They would rather spend all their money to go to a private university and follow not only the professors, but get education that, and the kind of information that is not publicly available. The impact to this is it increases the amount of inequality in society. Education is what allows individuals to do better and get access to jobs and also money. But in a world where people who are going to private educa education is not only getting better professors, but also information not available to the public, this increases the amount of inequality in society and ultimately turns the ability for the, uh, for the government to help people in greater society. And for these reasons, they're going to be voting for the opposition. Mr. Speaker, in today's debate, what we are actually debating about is whether or not the right of an individual such as a professor should be given more value as to what should be the benefit for the greater society itself. And on side, government, what we are trying to say is that when you give out such academic work to the general public and make it av available, you're actually helping the society in a great way because people have the access to information. And the fact that they should have this access to information, we believe that they have the right to this information and that universities like the public university should not keep it to themselves and whereas when we uh, give more value to the personal work of the professors itself Mr. Speaker what we are doing is we are keeping the information with ourselves rather than releasing it to the general public and making them educated on topics which they need to be educated on now moving before I move on to my issues of uh, first of uh, uh, like two issues one of uh, which being free education versus free access to academic book and the second issue of uh, science itself, I would like to get into a few points of uh, contention. First, first point of contention, Mr. Speaker, is that side opposition, specifically the member of opposition, believes that by giving the public general information, everyone's just going to stop coming to, uh, everyone's just going to suddenly stop coming to universities. Mr. Speaker, firstly, just because you have information does not mean that you have that much in-depth information or that you don't have that time to, uh, uh, time to give to conducting that information. Mr. Speaker, even people, even uh, rational people know that by just looking off the internet and learning, they're not going to get the true value of that education itself, itself and whether, and as a result, they would not be stopped coming to the public universities and public university tuitions are not going to be affected in any way or at all. No, thank you. <coughs> Sorry. Mr. Speaker, what also they think is that when you give out such uh, scientific information uh, to the general public, it is going to create, in a way, it is going to politicize science itself, whereby people give their opinions uh, on the issues of science or whether or not this research should be conducted or that research should be conducted or not. Mr. Speaker, again, we think that we, in uh, today's society, in this house, as the United States, as stated by Prime Minister, we think that people are rational thinkers and they know that certain research needs to be uh, conduct conducted. And when this research is conducted and when this information is available to them, they will be able to at least have that access to that information and have that basic uh, knowledge. No, thank you. Now, moving on to my issues, Mr. Speaker, the first issue of free education versus free access to, uh, to academic work. The first point brought out by the opening opposition was that they think that Obama's uh, speech in uh, they, they think that Obama's speech where he stated that uh, uh, two years of college should be given to free should be adhered to as opposed uh, to uh, giving free access of academic work. Mr. Speaker, we'd like to point out that giving to a, 
two year college education free is extremely costly and considering the fact that our government would not be able to fund so much free education at this point of time we think that rather than using such an avenue we would like to provide rather this academic work to uh, people whereby they are at least able to have the basic uh, knowledge to themselves but before I move on to my next issue go now they keep saying how these public donors contribute to the academic work but let's be honest this is not good bill hunting the uneducated public is not going to be able to contribute to scientific research without a lab without any prior knowledge all they're going to do is steer science in the wrong direction and that is what we need to stay away from this is because our opposition is only considering the fact that the general public Public is made of uneducated idiots, Mr. Speaker. This is not true. Yeah. In, in the fact, Mr. Speaker, the, uneduc- the public is also consists of research from other universities themselves. And when these re- when these professors have access to this information, they are able to better their own research themselves. And as my partner has already stated, Mr. Speaker, when you create a free flow of ideas or free pool of ideas. Uh, academic researchers are able to get an intrinsic collaboration between themselves where they're able to actually further research and actually improve research rather than keeping it restricted to the point that uh, they are uh, currently. Now moving on to my second issue of how there is uh, the issue of science of how it's being politicized. Mr. Speaker, UCLA is doing research for the betterment of the people uh, themselves and when they uh, provide such academic work to the general education public not only through the internet but also by publishing books and uh, providing them with such knowledge we think that this is going to uh, help people thems- uh, themselves and when people or uh, read these books or acquire this knowledge they are not only going to benefit themselves but when they propagate this idea to the general society we think that this free flow of information is only going to benefit the society in the uh, in the long run moreover at this point of time we we see that many people do not comprehend the uh, complete value of health resources or even health benefits but when such people propagate such information to other people in the societies we think that they are only going to help them and make them understanding and raise this understanding which, within the society which will only benefit the society in the long run and for these reasons mr speaker i urge you to please go with side government but mainly the closing side thank you <laughs> 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 nice thanks to whipper oh nice no, I don't think it's a second It's 30 seconds till I can be a wife, right? No, one minute. Oh, one minute? Oh, okay. All right. All right. So the chair now invites the opposition whip to give a five minute speech to close out this debate and summarize the case for his model. Here, here. Uh, by making professors share their work with the public and forcing them to put this information in the general public, you're actually going to be harming the quality of education in our country uh, through ways which I'll show. I'd like to move on first to uh, the arguments which was brought up in the last speech. Uh, first, the argument brought up by, uh, by the first half of the about politicized uh, that the, the info, information that will come out, come out of the university will be politicized. Uh, they responded by saying that people are rational thinkers and that they have this basic knowledge and that they can t- critique this work. Uh, my response is that that's not what happens in the real world. In the real world, people pick and choose what they, which really which science, uh, scientific articles to support, whether or not it supports uh, their ideas. We see this in many areas like climate change, evolution. P- people don't always want to listen to, to the general scientific consensus even with just the knowledge that is available right now. So, uh, so really, if we just look at what people actually believe in the world, this, this argument falls flat. We really can see that, uh, that people do, will, do pick and choose what they want to believe, yes. This is essentially why your side of the house is just a bit tying with what your previous speaker had said. You spoke about how people would rather go to private universities and, this, and all of that, right? The reality is that there are only a certain number of jobs. There's going to be a surplus. They're not going to be able to get a job in a private university, so they're going to have to take a job in a state university where they will have to do research. Essentially, everything that came out from your side is wrong. Okay, um, so, 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 uh, really our, our point there was that a lot of, a lot of these, uh, well, I was going to go on this later, but I guess I'll move on to it now, uh, a lot of these professors that live in private universities I do, the, do this research but are still allowed to publish their results into books, publish them into journals. Uh, once, once we enact this plan, they won't be able to do that. This information is now going to be public. That means they cannot uh, get any revenue uh, from their work, from, um, from, any of their, from any of their ideas, any of their studies. This means that they're really uh, not going to have an incentive to stay at these uh, public universities. They're going to instead go to, uh, go to private universities, 
uh, which, which, uh, which, uh, where they can, uh, where they can share their work. And you mentioned that they, they would take private university jobs anyway, but that's really not the case. A lot of uh, really, m many private universities would be would crave for a UCLA professor or a UC Berkeley professor. Uh, uh, private universities don't all uh, don't always pay more. Many many you know, uh, professors, for instance, stay in UCLA because they can do this great research, which they can in turn sell into books, sell into journals. Uh, that's why many professors stay here. Once we t once we enact this plan, they can't sell that. They can't put this into books. It's all available to the public. So what, what what will happen is that these uh, these professors will in turn go 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 instead of move to private universities. What will happen is that public colleges will lose all their good professors because they won't be able to get, uh, receive any rev uh, any revenue from the, from their work. So they move to these uh, private universities, and this in turn will hurt hurt the quality of education uh, at public uh, at public universities. And this will also have another impact. Students will not want to go to a, a public university as much because, uh, as my part, partner brought up, that, uh, that really all the, all the information that public universities have is private. Uh, I mean, pu sorry, public now. So you can just go to a private university which has information that isn't public. You, get, you really get a better, uh, a better deal when you go to a private university. So this in turn creates more inequality because these more expensive uh, private universities uh, are, are going to be the ones that have all the information, have the uh, have the better advantage, and have a, a more competitive edge in the market uh, in the market for students. So what we can see is that really the idea of having public universities is to have this: we can have good universities, we can have quality education that's cheap and affordable for everyone. Once uh, with this plan, we're we're really not going to have that because all of many good professors who want to who want to publish their uh, want to publish their journals want to uh, make money off what they off their work are going to move to private universities this in turn is going to create more inequality because the, the people that go to these private universities are are going to be uh, really going to be the rich really it's going to be make uh, uh, excuse me make education uh, more unaffordable for these people because uh, because they're not at these public universities they're moving to a, a less affordable source so in terms of what we get, it's actually, when we enact this plan, it's actually going to hurt the education system of the United States. It's going to increase inequality, it's going to hurt our public universities, and it's going to harm the info coming out uh, of these universities. So that in turn, this isn't going to have any good benefits to society. This is actually going to severely harm society and severely harm our school system. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, invite yourself to cross the aisle, shake hands, and... Uh, She'll hear the tape, so do everyone, please. Okay. Start at the beginning with the first speaker. All right, well, 4 p.m. Shania. Um, background she gave was pretty decent on the whole Obama speech and all that. It kind of set a little precedent there. Yeah. Um, points included uh, rights education, benefits education, and then her last uh, last point would be the next speech kind of thing. Um, the right to education and benefits education were very, very broad spectrum. They didn't really address any kind of narrow topics, which I wasn't a big fan of. Right. That being said, everything was well presented. Uh, the arguments were solid. They just didn't address too much of the heart of the issue, in my opinion, anyways. Right. Um, there was a lot of intricacies that kind of came out in the back half of this entire debate that weren't addressed fully in the front half. So I feel like we kind of addressed this kind of broad spectrum at the beginning and then got very nitty gritty in the details, which was great for this topic, in the back half. Uh, yeah. I agree. I mean, it was just mostly focused primarily on background. Um, I mean, perhaps it, it, that needed to come out to allow for the more nitty-gritty stuff on the back half, but 
And I think if we would have gotten a little bit more into the actual clash in that first round, maybe the first half would have been a little bit more back and forth exchange. Yeah, uh, just I'd like uh, you to comment on what you thought of her definition of academic work. And uh, I thought it was, um, I thought it was actually slightly abusive to be honest. Yeah. Did she actually say like, just lectures and stuff? Like, she didn't pick it no, up. I had professor no, research, not academic right, student. Right, I thought work. thinking that it was not a yeah, student. Yeah, research, yeah, not yeah. student. Right, okay, so what research, research was included? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. It was research, and then that did get twisted back later in the round to try to ex to extend it to just lectures. Right. Yeah. So there, be, no, there no, became I mean, a definitional a argument. shift. Yeah. Yeah, of the the definition, yeah. Speech, no, I was talking about lectures as a benefit. I wasn't saying that it's not about research, though. Okay. Yeah. I can see how that would be. Because when I was talking about free, flows of free flow of ideas, I was referring to research the whole time. Oh. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, okay, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. Okay. I, I'm not even looking at the and, and the final suggestion to uh, Shania and to everyone else is if you want to see some really grand opening government speeches go watch the opening governments of our on our website of the last five national championships watch harvard and yale and claremont do their opening governments and uh, see it done and compare it with the resolution okay so for leader opposition i'll stand um Okay, once again, kind of did a little background piece, which I thought was actually warranted. That was good. Um, redefining, I think, is smart. Or at least, even if it wasn't redefining, at least kind of, you know, making it a little bit more explicit than what the heck are we talking about. I thought that was a good move, actually. Um, I guess there, I thought there was a contention definitions. I guess it sounds like there wasn't then. Um, uh, I liked your whole they say and then we say kind of uh, counter, you know, point counterpoint. I think that was pretty well done. The whole everyone should be educated, and then if you aren't educated, you deserve access. I think that's a valid point. I, I think it might come across as a little harsh to some people. And that being said, it's not like it's invalid. Right. Um, I like your points. Uh, the slippery slope one, I did not like. I thought it was just really tentative. Um, sure. Yeah. I just. Uh, it, I, I can I jump in on that? Yeah, one? absolutely. You know, it, it's not necessarily even the argument that you're making. It's the fact that you call it slippery slope. Slippery slope's a fallacy. So as soon as I hear that, it sets off alarm bells yeah. in my head. So you could change that around and still make some of the same argument because, I mean, what you're talking about is cutting funding based on research topics and how this leads to government involvement and right. kind of skews research. I think that's a great line of argumentation. However, you call it slippery slope, it's like me, me, in the back of my head that you're, you're making a fallacy. So, so yeah, Austin, awesome. that's become that's a cliche one. in debate. That's why we right. have multiple judges. Yeah. Avoid that. I, I'm actually going to slightly disagree with that, though, and here's my take on it, is that I don't think the, the, the argument was actually valid at all. And my reasoning is, Shane is talking about, you know, the differentiation, you know, the, if a government could differentiate it aside and all kind of stuff, you get different fu funding for different works. But that was never actually stated in the plan. They never said that we're going to base funding on what you come out with. Yeah. It was just we're going to base funding on you know whether you release all your stuff or not. So I don't think the differential. Uh, is okay, actually would you issue. would you agree though if he could have extended his argument to say that that's a natural consequence of allowing yes. it? Yes. If you would have included that part, because I think I think we're both on the same page that the argument that you're making is fine, but you need to provide the link of how that's yeah. going to happen. I feel like you almost did some of the work for it. Yeah, I, I am. I am doing a little bit of the work on And it's just because I think that the argument is fine, but you need to provide that link. You know what I mean? You're making the claim, you're showing me the impact, but that there is no link. And I, I think that's where we're both kind of getting caught up. Uh, my favorite point of yours, though, is actually the uh, the public opinion is not equal good science thing. I don't, I neither like love it nor hate it. It was, I think it's a decent argument. It For me, it's kind of like a filler one. Like if you're running out of time, you throw that in. Not to bring down, I think it could, if you expand upon it, maybe it could, I, I'm not thinking. But it could have maybe gone somewhere. I think my favorite one though was the monetary incentive one, which I think became a really pertinent issue in the back half. And I think that you should try and take advantage of the fact that it was expanded upon so greatly in the back half. Try and take credit for that during one of your POIs. Mm -hmm. As we said in our first thing about this freaking monetary incentive thing and try to bring the credit back to you. Okay. okay. Um, other than that, yeah, it was actually a really good speech. Yeah, once again, really great um, on your uh, on your sign posting, other than the slippery slope we were talking about. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way you're structuring your cases is great. The way you're presenting them is great. It's good energy, good vibe. One thing I'd like to see you work on, though, is put the paper down. Like, oh, I know yeah. you're holding your hand, and that's, that's fine, and I know that, but I, I want to see you, you know, speaking, not reading from a piece of paper. And I think it's, it's a little bit more impressive to judges when the paper's not completely visible. Just a piece of advice.
two comments to you. Um, the energy is good. It's a little better on your POIs being directed yeah, at that. A little mellower, a little more likable. Good energy, good thrust in them though, and good good energy in the beginning of them. I like that. On this resolution, I was waiting for you to hold them to all academic work. I, I was just begging for someone to say, this resolution says, not some academic work, not part of it, not a little bit of it. This, this puppy says all. And, you know, I don't care where this debate goes, but they have to release all work. And I think that was a uh, ground that the op could have used to their advantage yeah. that wasn't fully taken advantage I guess, of. No. I guess, yeah, well, I, didn't, I just want to know, like, for future, if this ever does come up and around, if you say, like, all academic work, would that, do you think that would include, like, research that isn't completed yet? No, no, but it also it, it includes it's work. It's not necessarily staying completed. I mean, it's, it's, a it, it's, it's a set. It's a setup for all the top it, secret yeah, work that our government is doing on computers, on, computer, on, computer, on, yeah, yeah. on bio, on the Actually, yeah, like biohazards, and bio, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. all that stuff yeah. has to come out yeah. now because it says all. Oh, really wait, wait, you no, he's saying like government, like government funded the top secret works that aren't necessarily for the public. It says universities, no. Yeah. No, no, universities. My lab yeah, works with like, DARPA specifically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but DARPA is specifically classified. So yeah. No. I mean, no, but, but they do work with our lab. Uh, but again, no. No, government over what run? Yeah. Yeah, because that's what you consider university research. It might be in tandem with university, but it's not oh, considered yeah, university research. So, so it's not considered university. No. Yeah, yeah I, I think I would have liked to have had it thrown out there. At, even as a straw man or something, to just to hold them to, to hold yeah, them to that burden of all, and let them play with it and deal with it as best they can. Personal opinion, I would you would actually kind of lose a little uh, face in my eyes yeah. as a judge. I think that you're that's a huge straw man. I mean, like a good example is like Caltech. There's a lot of work for near aerospace yeah. and like JPL, but you, they don't release any of that work ever. You, they, no. All the people who work are Caltech employees. But is that academic work? Okay, let's go on. Okay, next person is. Mm. Yes, it is. Um, okay. Mr. Killer POIs. I was given the killer POIs. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about we'll this. We'll get to that. Yeah, that, that was great POIs. Um, okay, so for your rebuttal portion, um, equating. Okay, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, oh, oh, you cleared up the whole uh, the lectures, not just academic. Oh, you actually said lectures includes like, or sorry, academic work includes lectures, not just academic work. Okay, so you said just. Okay. Yeah. So that you actually did clear that up. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Um, you were talking about the. Uh, I did not even really understand where you were going with the whole they're extending definition to private universities and therefore that means they agree with us? Like, no, it's like, like they're just trying to extend the definition to grant themselves more grant. How does that help them though? It gives them more grant. Period. Yeah. It didn't at all though. It, it, like, not in this I point. think his yeah. response was fine. I thought, I thought it was Because there was no real point to why they said it. No, no, I, the, I, the response that I flowed, I mean I heard that part, but the response that I flowed was that, that will equate to an increased funding requirement which makes the plan not feasible. I agree with that part, but the whole, like, that means they agree with this thing, I just, I didn't get it, I didn't see where you were going with it. Uh, I kind of see where it's going. I think it was weakly argued, yeah. I mean, I think you need to clear that up okay. a little bit, okay. but yeah. I think that speaks to a, just a bigger overall problem with the, with the speech you had today was it seemed like you were trying to give a seven minute speech in five minutes. So, I, I mean, it was well structured and you had a lot of information, but you clearly just couldn't get through everything. Yeah. So. yeah. Keep that in mind, but it's a five minute speech, you're never going to run into that in competition. So, the science is good because open access leads to more critiquing. I like that. Freaking, that's a very valid argument. You know, more eyes on the paper means more opinions on it, means more information on it. I think that's a really strong, strong argument. I actually would have liked if you would have spent a little more time on that one. Now, right. I realize you have time constraints, so right. you know, leniency is granted for that. Um, mon your answer to monetary incentive boiled down to essentially not a problem, they still get paid. Um, Expand. It's another one where I would say expand upon it a little bit. Explain to me how the pay that they're still getting is still equitable to what they're currently receiving. You know, kind of show me that the incentive is still there because the argument shown later on that they would just move to private universities is extremely compelling. So I would. Oh, my screen just died. Um, so yeah, I would like a little bit more expansion on that. It's. I think pretty much most of my critiques for you say basically expand upon stuff a little bit. And again, because you had, geez, you have so five much. five points plus rebuttal. Um, yeah. I would say maybe actually just try and work on condensing down arguments. Either boil right. some things in, you know, take two arguments and merge it into one, or just you know throw out your weakest argument. Which uh, actually I don't know which one that would be. Um, 
I don't know, maybe maybe the high school one. No, because I like the one talking about freaking. Uh, if you see this material earlier on, you could pick out your major later on, or, you know, or give you kind of an idea yeah. of what you want to major in. I thought that was a really cool argument. That's one I didn't think of. So I really enjoyed that because it took the whole entire debate in a dynamic that I wasn't expecting. Um, so you didn't really have a weak argument here, so I just think maybe merge some. Because I didn't see any, yeah. that, personally to me, that seemed as fit. Yeah, I really didn't have much else to add to that. I mean, I, I think, once again, it just comes down to that you're just, you had so much information you wanted to get out in the five minute speech. It's just, you know, you, you suffered in a couple areas, plus you didn't get to really finish your last line of argumentation that well, and you could tell you were rust. So I don't think that's necessarily a problem that needs to be corrected. I think you'd be fine if you had seven minutes. Right. I would just add, let's see if you can get some contrast in your delivery, okay? Because it, it, it's now better and it's more dynamic and more energetic than I've seen in some of your speeches, which I'm liking. But I also like there to be yeah, a yeah, stop I get and it. start. Yeah. So, so, it's, so it's not just all the yeah, same. Yeah, I get it. You know, something stands out with emphasis. Okay. All right. So for my next critique for video, um, I'm also going like, to, uh, yeah, Theodore, I want you to actually kind of listen to the critiques for video too, because you actually both. Um, you both kind of did the same thing uh, to me anyways. Um, it was that both of you were kind of lack lacking impacts. You gave me a lot of freaking information, you gave me a lot of links, you gave me claims. I didn't see too many impacts. Um, so for Vithya, um, you were talking, okay, so your rebuttal to the, the limited to lectures thing, it didn't, you know, didn't come out the PM speech, and that, you know, many resources do this in status quo. That's fine, I understand there was a big misunderstanding about definitions. I really didn't know where it really fell, so I didn't know who defined what as what. So that was fine. I don't, you know, bridge you that. Uh, I just lost your name. Oh, there you are. Um, see, the, uh, you also talk about the extension to private mean, uh, means that we agree with them. This is not true. Again, good to clarify that because I thought it was a, a bad argument initially, or at least an untrue argument. Um, and the distinguishing between educated individuals and working class, I don't really have too much there. I just wish you would have explained it a little more because I didn't see where you're going with it. I've, I kind of know the gist of where, you're, but yeah, I didn't hear it fully explained. So I didn't flow too much after that. Maybe that was just me. Uh, um, I love the point, if you can access the lectures, why attend college? I think that's a very, very strong point for the opposition. Um, I, I think you did expand upon that one pretty well. So I thought that I really don't have any critiques on that argument, to be honest. Um, social effects of making the work public. Um, talking about freaking uh, dictating where, you know, dictating freaking what happens in the academic world. That's one where I really didn't hear impacts. You talked about the things will be dictated in the academic world. You did explain to me why this is bad. I mean, inherently, I know it's bad. I know there's a lot of bad things about it. But again, assume that we're stupid. You have to tell me why it's bad. You have to tell me that the research coming out is fallacious, which means they're going to lead to improper conclusions. That you know means that it's going to stifle research later on, so on and so forth. You need to show me why this thing's bad, even if you consider it absolutely obvious. Because I'm dumb. I'm really dumb. Yeah, on that point, I think um, one thing that jumped in my mind of, of talking about, you know, politicizing the work and government involvement and all that stuff is uh, just look at what happened last year is that Congress massively slashed government funding for political science work just across the board. And it's a huge problem right now. And you, I mean, you raise the example of art and philosophy, and I think that's great as well. But it's, once again, I think you need to extend out those impacts and really show me the harms of, you know, look, you might not think that art and philosophy is greater. You might not think that political science is great. But look at all these great things that we can come from it. And when you extend out those impacts and those harms, I think it, it makes it a much stronger point. Yeah, uh, show me that you know, the beauty of this is that freaking, even if you think it's not great, someone else does. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you, you got me right there. So, um, yeah, I don't really have any much else to add. I think you pretty much covered everything there. Yeah, I would add. So, uh, you want me to give over to you? For no, that's fine. I usually need the run and runs. It's a, I would add two things. Put your pen down. I really hate that. And, you know, just leave it on the desk or stay away from it when you're speaking so you have both hands free to gesture and just hurt your credibility a little bit. Uh, begging for POIs hurt your credibility a little bit. Uh, I know you were, you were grasping a little for things to say, and, but it hurt your credibility a little bit. So don't ask quite so often for so yeah, many one, questions. One time, would have been tough. The one time, time it, I was but okay. three times, like, like, eh, like, okay, what's going on here? You're a smart woman, and you don't need to do that. Now, here's the one thing to, to teach her how to give these impact. Come up with a phrase that's the opposite of the resolution like, 
don't vote for conditional funding or something that, that you know, in a word or two, succinctly tells this general public these conditions why you shouldn't do this. Don't, 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 don't adopt conditional funding. Don't do this. It's really bad. Bad things are going to happen. And this is these guys went for all the disadvantages they could come up with and think of in their lives, but you know the setup came here. But um, those are my only two comments. Yeah. And just I would I would kind of I mean I think it's kind of a addendum to your point, but just try to punch up the uh, signposts a little bit, just just a, just a tad. I mean they're definitely there and I'm definitely catching them, but yeah. they're a little bit on the long side. So I mean you could just kind of condense them down and punching them up a little bit and really kind of speak to the point that you're trying to make a little bit more I think that would help, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, so moving on to Theodore. Alrighty, uh, basically the same thing on the impact cycles. <coughs> oh, sorry. If you don't die. Alright, yeah, I'll try not to die. Um, I'll start basically, off. <laughs> yeah. um, basically the same thing for the impacts portion. Um, I just wasn't hearing any impacts really. I was hearing claims. I was hearing good support. I just didn't hear why we need to do this, like what's going to happen if we don't, or what happens when we do. So the impacts need to be there. Um, impacts for on your side kind of sounded like it's their right or stuff like that. It, that's not really an impact. That's I mean that's like a tagline. You know, we have the right to education. Well, what's the impact of if we don't? Or what's the impact of having a right to education? What does it give us? What does it do for society? Um, so I really, really was searching for that, and I just wasn't finding any impacts. I think I said on a couple of times that it's better for everyone. That's not impact. Kind of, so. No, that's a claim. That's a claim. You're, you're telling me that it's going to be better, but why? What makes it better? What? Why? I mean, like, really, you have to explain to me why is it better that masses are even educated? Because person, I think we need blue collar, we need white collar, we need everybody, we need the uneducated people. Work at my McDonald's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Tell me why we need education in the masses. Explain to me why this right to education and that education for the masses and publicly available information is so important. So, impacts were lacking, but uh, one thing, I kind of like some of your taglines and some of your examples. I like it you brought up Galileo, it was interesting, although I think that kind of works personally for the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it kind of sounds like a point that they should have brought up, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but, what's up? Okay. Um, but I mean, tags like, you know, win-win situations, but it's catchy, it, it sticks in my mind. Like even when I look down right now at my flow, I was like, oh yeah, I remember you saying that. Keep it up with tag, your tags, I thought your tags were really good, um, your structure was pretty decent. Um, you know, things like free exchange of ideas, win-win situation, society based on social contract. I mean, like these are punchy, They're, they really stick. So keep that up, that was great. I think that's probably the first time I've heard like all your tags actually really stick in my head. And it was really great to keep that work up. Yeah, if, it, if you could see some of those, like those taglines, just how so small they were, like win-win situation, social contract. I mean, like that small, it's just a tagline. Because if it's small, it means you can repeat it two or three times, and it really gets to make sure that we get a catch on. I mean, if it's a sentence long, it's a little bit harder for us to catch all the nuances. Sticks, of it. sticks in the mind um, better, yeah. Oh, I have one last thing also. Freaking your, your point about incentives for science is not money, it's making the world better. Love that example, actually. But you have to show me why. Because I'm not going to take you at face value on that. I'm going to go like, dude, if I'm a freaking scientist, I want to make money. Yeah, That's I the first that. thing that's going through my head. So you have to show me why that is. Show me something about freaking, oh, you know, doctors without borders go through all this medical training and yet never make a dime doing this kind of stuff. Show me examples of altruism in the scientific mm -hmm. community. You show me that, I'm going to go like, dude, he's right. So give me examples. I, and Dr. Zott Moore is the first thing popped into my head. Jonas Salk. If I had more time in your example, I would be able to talk more. Say again? If I had more time in your example, I would be able to talk more. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Five minutes. All right, um, just structurally, some of the things that I wanted to go over. Um, I mean, you already touched on the fact that you had great signposts. Like, I have nothing negative to say about that. I think you spent a little bit too much time on reputation. Uh, I, especially as a member of government, I mean, one of your main jobs is to come out and provide that extension to, you know, to really make the debate about your side. And while you definitely want to engage with their, with their information, you want to save the majority of your time to present your case. Um, that being said, just some of the couple of the points, the, the social contract point, while I agree with you, there's something there that needed to be expanded on heavily for me. Um, just for my own personal taste, I just, it didn't really seem to, to go anywhere. Um, Social contract. That was oh, the first yeah. point in his yeah. case. It, it just didn't. I, like, I was see, waiting for it to develop, and then it didn't go. I didn't see where it fit in. Yeah, it just. Yeah. 
I think it could. Um, I mean, because there is an idea of social contract and public universities, public money. We're all in this together. I get where you're going, but you need to really build that out. Um, let's see. Can I pass? So, like, that was like my thought with the whole. Why, I'm just like asking you if this is good idea. When I was defining it as private, is like I thought it kind of takes away the social contract because like then it's like if you're paying taxes directly to like public schools, then like you're obligated to give the money and stuff. And then it's social contract. We're helping you. But if you're just giving money to the government, they decide where it goes. The schools are no longer at the social contract because the people have been paid. The government gave you random fuck. We are, are the government. I mean, no, but the government has like no. You have no say in the so you aren't paying taxes for school. We have a representative. Yeah, I have representatives, and if I don't like what they're doing, trust me, I've called my representative and bitched him out before. So, <laughs> I'm like my representative's worst nightmare. Okay, any more for thing. Theodore? Um, yeah, I mean, if you did, you had something I you wanted to add. One quick one. Did you take points of information? I did not. Okay, you will be penalized for that. And they expect you to take two. Were you afraid to, or you I just was, didn't I want just to, or you knew that you I didn't weren't have into it, or what? I didn't have enough time to go through everything. I wanted that to you start. wanted to do. Yeah. Okay, just realize this is one of the rules. You're expected to take two, and in the discussion afterwards between the the head judge and the wings, someone will point out Theodore didn't take any POIs. Okay, and between the two sides, you're expected to take three. So. Yeah, the way I would say to do it is freaking, if most people do refutation and then their points. So after your refutation is done, take one POI if you can. And then after, let's say you have four points, after your second point, take another POI. Yeah, the problem with that it's... advice on this case is he spent a hell of a lot of time yeah. on his refutation, yeah. which was good. I, I like the way you were practicing. They said I disagree because mm, yeah. I just didn't get a lot of therefores uh, linking to the conditional state. There was just a lot of claim to respond. Um, okay. And then this one thing though, I didn't like your last tagline on your case that it shouldn't even be a debate. Oh yeah, yeah. that was like <laughs> your very, that was like yeah, your very opening uh, line in your very first debate here, your very first night. Yeah, I mean, that's what it reminded it me of. Totally fine, like that. Like I bought the argumentation behind it, but just. Change the tagline, because it should be a debate, because that's why we're... Like, <laughs> like, should, like, yeah, you, you can't say, we shouldn't even be talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, moving on to Justin, Justin Lee. All right, freaking, uh, actually, okay, so I, I actually stopped following for a lot of this, because I was screwing up my time, but I mean, I, I'm going to let you go over the analysis for this, because I okay. love, the argumentation I thought was fantastic. I mean, just mm -hmm. spot on. Yeah, I mean, I think you gave us a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you pulled out that wasn't being debated in around. I really like that. Um, for both of you, actually. I mean, I'll get to other Justin in a second. But, um, I think you both raised points that we were both back there actively looking for. Um, and some stuff that we weren't looking for because we didn't expect it. And we were like, wow, that's a great point. Anytime you can surprise me, that's awesome. Um, still need to drop the jargon a little bit. Just, I mean... There was a little bit of, you need to flow this impact to our side and flow this well, impact. I didn't catch that. Yeah, it was, I didn't it was, say flow, yeah. It's, it's, just a, it's on bit. the tape, believe me. It's, it's not that bad, though. It's not that bad at all. It's just a little bit more. Um, the tape doesn't fine. lie. I, I was surprised you could speed on the control. That was fine. That was a conversational tone. That was great. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't go any faster. No, <laughs> no, any, no. Like, I would go slower. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, okay, I, let's I, keep going. Um... Yeah, I mean, just I, I really don't have any complaints about any argumentation that you had. I mean, I just I think you need to you could benefit from using better taglines. Um, I don't know if you use those in MPDA that often. No, yeah, we do. Um, but yeah, I mean, just just punch those up and really give me headers and especially well, and hear me out. And this is why is that because you tend to speak at a faster rate than most debaters, I would like to see a pause, like a you know. Let me give you my tagline. Pause for a second yeah, for effect, really and then delve into so it. So, like, so on the public flight argument. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Just like that. It just, it doesn't need to be long. Just a short second to let me know. Yeah, that's ah, we're for moving you to too. a new that's point. Kind of thing. Because with the speed, it, it kind of tends to get a little. Okay. And that's I think where you were having a little trouble flowing, and I was having a little bit of trouble flowing. Is that it all kind of blended together? So if you could okay. just slow down yeah. in between points, you'd be fine. Um, to be honest, actually, the tagline. So, I mean, like, perfect, are these your tags? Because these are what I got as tags. It's like, resolution, uh, resolution remover, I, I paraphrase for resolution, but removes uh, incentive to pay tuition, yeah. lose-lose situation, which I love the twist on the, uh, yeah. the gut side, 
and then free marketplace. I mean, yeah. I, I caught them just maybe no, I, I, of, basically the way I structure, I decided to put all my argument, my new arguments, as reputations to his. I, I didn't like so that. So like, I just turned his argument. I've got to say, like your dichotomy argument was probably the most impactful in the uh, in the entire round, and I think that Justin Nielsen did a very good job keeping up with that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll address that in a second because I have one critique on that part. But it, it's not so much it's not so much that the taglines were bad themselves. It's that hard to catch. Just, they're they're just a little hard to catch. Okay. So and I mean, yeah. you're you're from MPDA. We just spent all weekend doing MPDA, so we're like really just spun up on speed. But at yeah. point Loma, they're not going to be, and they're gonna be like, ooh. So the, the, yeah, just just. The, Breathe for a second. Just get that post out there, like let it sink in, and then hit him with the information. Okay. I think you're going to be just fine. I really, though, your argumentation was just. I I mean, you had your favorite one. Mine was information versus mince information. I thought oh, that yeah. was such a great tagline, and the argumentation blew it. I honestly, I didn't really even flow it because I just wanted to stop and appreciate it. It was really good. <laughs> so. Okay. Any, anything else for there? I have a couple of comments. First off, always. You're not focused yet enough on the judge. Oh, I thought persuaded. you were one of the judges. No. Yeah, that's what I thought too. There, no, there's a confusion no. between who to no. no, so I want you to turn around and oh, always, when I'm doing my POI. whenever you do POI, okay, yeah, go I've, straight to the POIs. master judge and the two wings gotcha. always. But focus yeah. your yeah. eyes yeah. on them yeah. and make eye contact with them. Forget the other side. Because gotcha. yeah. you weren't doing that. The other thing is learn to wave off more. Learn to wave off more rather than taking your verbal time to say no thank you. And work up some clever things, but you disagree for your POIs, but you know, yes sir now, or something, but not just yes every time. Okay. Um, I would, uh, to address that point, actually, freaking, I would say, because I, I didn't see you stand until the second half, so you only POI the back half. Exactly, yeah. You can POI the front, and you should be POI the front. Yeah, I realize it, that, it keeps yeah. the judges remember, oh, yeah, there's a back half back there. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, like, we tend to kind of forget about the guys that we are listening to. Um, I really would have liked to hear some of your analysis you know, during other people's speeches. So try and stand up more often. Okay. I would say that your team actually had the fewest POIs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys just didn't stand very much. And I would okay. like to see more of that, because yeah. your analysis was great. I just want to hear more of it. Yeah, and you can use those as setups for your own for argument, for your own coming argumentation. So, um, you know, factor that in, and uh, because what what you're really trying to do with your POI is show <laughs> that you're really brilliant and bright and smart, and you're thinking in this debate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Government whip was all right. Critique. Um, Actually, this is the part where I had the issue with my timer, so I got like no. Oh, okay, I got flow. <laughs> Sorry, I got your flow just fine. Um, good refutation. I mean, you're you're really using like it was very clear, like you know, mm -hmm. this is what they said. We disagree. Here's why. I mean, all of that was flowed very well. I was able to flow it perfectly. Um, same thing with your case. Your case is well done. Um, point. Yeah, he wasn't so. The only problem that I have with your speech, just structurally overall, is while your points and everything was structured well, as the whip, I need more summary. Like, I need more, like, wind it up for me. Like, the last thing that should be said is, therefore, you have to vote for us. And, and while you did have that part in it, and it was, it was funny, but <laughs> the part yeah. before that needs to tell me why. It's, and instead, it felt more like a member of government speech as opposed to a whip speech. So focus more on, you know, get up, give me a little background, like, hey, what have we seen here today? Because you're the first whip, so, you know, you get a, the real chance to 